from Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hi guys, uh, my name is Yuri Nieminen. I'm the goalkeeper coach of uh, New York Red Bulls, and you're listening to the Bola Bola Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show. It's been a long time since we had a podcast recording, so it's good to be back. But first things first, let me bring in my two co-hosts. Bala, how's it going, man? Oh, good. <clears throat> Great to be back again after so long. Very excited. Very, very, very excited. Words can't be made. Can't be mentioned yet. Okay, okay. Maybe Elvin was having the same interview. Yeah, you know, <laughs> finally, <laughs> uh, finally, three of us are back again. And, you know, what, what a day we look forward to today, guys. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, guys, you know, today on our show, we are absolutely honored to have the first team goalkeeping coach and head of the goalkeeping coach at the New York Red Bulls, Mr. Yiri Nimanen. Welcome to our show, Yiri. Woo! Thank you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Yeah, we are great. Great to have you on board. And so, how how have been things? And uh, where are you based now, Yiri? Uh, yeah, things are things are great. I'm currently on holidays in 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 my home country in Finland. Mm. Uh, it's not so often anymore that I I get to visit uh, visit my home, visit my family and friends. Yeah, so it's absolutely. been it's been great. Absolutely, yeah. When you get the opportunity, you know, it's good to spend Christmas there with those guys. Yeah. Okay. Hundred percent. So, yep, yeah, Yiri. So you know, let's uh, let's talk a bit about your background. So you know, how I mean, let's say we start off with your playing career. Would you like to share with us how did that go? Yeah, um, it's it's a short story, but many many maneuvers there. Um, mm. <clears throat> so I'm I'm quite short guy, um, and playing as a goalkeeper. Um, Let's say that there was certain limitations that, of course, as a young young boy, I didn't wanna wanna understand or wanna adapt. But um, I signed with the Finnish second tier club when I was pretty much 14, 15, uh, and after that, m- made really clear decision that I wanna make my my life and and career in football. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, it was it was traveling around the Finland, playing in a lower division as kind of a professional player in semi-professional teams. Uh, but same same time, started coaching young goalkeepers. Um, <clears throat> and it's it's hard to say in in what moment the the playing career changed into the coaching career. Okay. Uh, but I always I I always wanted to play as long as it makes sense uh, to get that experience and of course love the game. Mm-hmm. So I think I played my last game when I was 25. So I pretty much played in same or similar levels in Finnish uh, second and third year um, okay. since I was 17. So it was it was a lot of games and a lot of traveling for the game. Uh, already back at that time, and and I started early uh, in in men's game, so that that way I could say that I had some kind of career over there. Mm-hmm. Okay, All right. Okay. Yep. And, and just as you mentioned, you retired at a very young age, twenty five, to pursue a career to become a goalkeeping coach. So, what was the main inspiration behind this decision? Yeah. Uh, first, first training as a coach, I think I made when I was thirteen. Um, and there was no goalkeeper coaches, so sometimes I was coaching uh, kids younger than younger than I was, but sometimes I was coaching uh, kids uh, older than I was, oh. and and realized there was not a lot of goalkeeper coaches. I was never coached, so um, I kind of found <clears throat> found it motivating and inspiring to be able to help the other kids uh, in in an area that I was never helped. So I think like deep deep inside that's the main main reason um to start coaching and and you know take it more seriously and and educate myself in in that regard um and the transition from playing to coaching i think it was most natural thing because um the playing career was never progressing really uh, coaching career was progressing really fast so i could i could just at the beginning, coach uh, as much as I wanted, like get a little extra money from that, and then later uh, got some got some really good coaching opportunities that were 
were not expected for such a young guy like I was in age of uh, 23, 24. <clears throat> so it was kind of an easy, uh, easy decision. Uh, but way before that decision, I knew that I want to be coach. Uh, I was preparing myself to be coach on my free time, uh, studying and, and all that. But at that time, not really knowing what should I study and who could help me and what should I do. So I was trying to do multiple multiple different things and, and study also a, a kind of a sports science at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I think talking about your coaching career, uh, what are the most important techniques that you emphasize the most when you're coaching your goalkeepers? Is it on the more on the uh, technical side or the more on the uh, mental side? What, what are the key features you think is important? Mm-hmm. I, I think the best way to start to answer this question is um, to tell a little bit about the, the evolution of, of my coaching and maybe same time the uh, goalkeeper coaching in general. I would say that it's been it's been very physical at the beginning. After that, it was really technical, and and then slowly moving <clears throat> moving to direction when it's when it's actually coaching a football goalkeepers in a tactical concepts. Um, if I think what kind of exercises I was I was doing when I was twenty or or seventeen, and and then starting as a professional coach and going coming today. Um, if I think, if I tell, if I must say something about techniques, I would say that be complete and, and emphasize more the techniques that are, are happening more often. And in my analysis, it, it must be, uh, one-on-one techniques and, and short distance, uh, short stopping, uh, specific techniques, uh, for multiple reasons, um, mainly because, uh, uh, professional goalkeepers that are now in top of the world, when they were young, they were not really working on those specific techniques. So that's something that I know that I can bring some extra in in a very, very short time uh, so that they can improve their game quickly. Um, and the and the other reason is that when when we're talking about those those short distances, that means also that there is no time. So everything must happen really quickly. Um, so whatever concept or execution must be in a really high level to be able to to uh, perform in in short time frame. So I would definitely say that th- those techniques uh, I'm I'm emphasizing ma- most. Um, but in my coaching philosophy, everything is always coming from a game situation concept and and the demand of a specific situation and then i'm building everything from that perspective physically and technically Mm -hmm. okay and and does your coaching method applies the same to all goalkeepers or do you have some kind of flexibility based on the goalkeeper's personality or style of play yeah absolutely um so the main thing is always the result and and the result is same as your your solution in relation to the challenge uh, in specific envi- environment. So it, it doesn't really matter what, how do we how do we come into the optimal result or maximum result. Of course, uh, <clears throat> me as a coach, I have uh, an idea about the perfect um, technique, t- tactic, physical performance uh, in my head. And then, like you said, everybody is different, and it, it's all about it's all about the person that I'm trying to coach. Coaching is helping somebody, uh, <clears throat> so then I have to find the way how my I, my idea of a perfect is coming together in that athlete. So yeah, there is a lot of adjustments, but also I need to be I need to be coach, and I need to be uh, on top of the situation. With, with the personalities that they think that they are already perfect or they think that they know or they think that they are not capable of changing because of age or whatever for whatever reason, I need to be strong enough to say, yes, you are, actually you are um, a- still able to change and there is a lot to change. 
to be able to come into the uh, into better results or or whatever like people might be lacking something that they don't realize and it's my job to to make them to understand and in a best case help them to understand but in a worst case make them to understand so um all together there is a lot of lot of minor details that that i can be individualizing because i always have two to four goalkeepers at the same time to work with so there's there's also this capacity and room to to adjust and it doesn't always need, mean that it's changing something it can be it can be also adding something or taking something away from the general program uh to to individualize mm-hmm. and yeah yeah Okay, and and uh, Yiri, you know, you mentioned just now a bit about the evolution, you know, of the the way the goalkeepers were and what they are now, you know, from the previous days where you know they usually save it and then just hoof the ball long, you know. Nowadays, you can see more proactive approach where we get a lot of ball playing uh, goalkeepers. In fact, sweeper keepers, uh, people like you know Edison, where you know uh, coaches like Guardiola and all always emphasize a lot. So you know. Do you foresee there will be further development on this role in years to come? Yeah, I've been asked that question quite often, mm-hmm. and and there is always a lot of talk, and there's always a lot of presentations and ideas and beautiful sentences about about this to- these kind of topics. Um, but at the same time, the development hasn't been so big in practice so i think i think there is more beautiful presentations about the role of the goalkeeper in build up situations um for example then there is actual actions in general i don't mean in top level or i don't mean uh, in in a top leagues only but i mean in general in the world of football like the football is played in so many different levels all over the world So I think there is still a lot of room of improvement in those areas that you mentioned. Um, and of course, you can always take these areas further. But I think one, one, one thing that I could see coming more and more popular in the future is, is uh, final third defending mm-hmm. uh, as a collective. So, for example, covering the goal, blocking the shots, as a collective so that goalkeeper can focus on a one corner a little bit more because he already knows in advance uh, how, how the defenders are trying to cover the goal and block the shots so that you kind of maximizing the chance of of um, stopping the shot together and and this same idea can be applied in in a crosses as well mm-hmm. uh, and short distance uh, situations so i think And 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 also why I say this is that there is a lot of room of improvement over there. Like we all know, the the game is is at the end is decided in both boxes. So same time as we focus on on scoring from our opportunities, I think we we should also focus on preventing the goals. Mm-hmm. And 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 so so this is more of I would say like really training up the goalkeepers in terms of anticipation, yeah. So like uh, if absolutely. the defenders defenders positioning and you know, and and sometimes I know like we see it many times, you know, those those deadly deflections, you know, <laughs> deflected yeah. off a off a defender's shin, and you know the goalkeeper goes one direction. You know, is there any sort of a training you guys? Uh, specify in terms of deflections, like just kicking it against a cone or something, just to train the keeper. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but we are trying to do that as realistic as possible. So mm-hmm. what I'm doing, I'm really putting another goalkeeper there, acting as a defender, and then there is sometimes the shot is blocked, okay. sometimes it comes it comes through the legs, sometimes it will be deflected from the shin, like you said. Mm-hmm. And of course, trying to trying to create the scenarios where the deflection is is possible, or there is a chance of deflection. But mm-hmm. I'm I'm really trying to avoid um, that kind of artificial situations, like the ball is coming out of the cone or something like that. But mm-hmm. still having the same idea, like you said, 
Mm, I see. Okay, that's great. All right. Okay. Um, quite interesting view. So I think for, uh, football has uh, evolved over the period of years, and then especially I think goalkeepers also I think have been, uh, improved in terms of safety wise. I think even the recently uh, the goalkeeper incident back in the uh, Peter Church, he used to wear the rugby uh, protective gear. So in a personal view, if you could introduce one specific change into the rules for a goalkeeper, what will it be? Or if you have one or two specific changes, also you are welcome to share here. Mm. This <clears throat> this would be amazing opportunity to to make up a new rule that that changes the whole football. You know, when people in FIFA are listening to this podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> go ahead, be the first man, yeah. be the first. Yeah. Be the first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, who knows? This this could be where it all started. Yeah, <laughs> okay. exactly. But now the second statement is very very boring. I I think I'm also I'm young guy, but I'm quite conservative. So always when there is a change in the rules or something new, I'm thinking, ah, oh, what's the reason to do that? I think there was no need. So for this goal kick rule that was introduced uh, two years ago, I I I love it, and and that was the first thing that I remember thinking that hey, I love I love the direction that this is going. And and second thing, when we have this rule that that when the goalkeeper gets gets the ball to his hands mm-hmm. how many seconds is it that the goalkeeper is allowed to keep the ball six i think is it six seconds yeah, yeah but have you seconds. how many times you see uh, us respecting that rule how many times the referee is really doing something how many times the goalkeeper is really taking it seriously that it's a six seconds mm-hmm. so i think it would be interesting change If we really start to respect that rule, mm. you know, I don't mean that if it's a seven seconds that it's a free mm. kick, but you know, when it's eight and nine, you know, because that would also change uh, things in the same direction. Like the goal kick, kick rule changed that it's a little bit more dynamic and the ball is a little bit more on the play. And but of course that puts that that would put a lot of physical demand on the defenders as well to you know after defending for a long time you have to open up quickly because the goalkeeper really have to release the ball mm-hmm. so that that's something that i'm thinking um mm-hmm. but it's nothing new right it's just uh, <laughs> just to read the rule book again. it's just about these guys uh, really uh, you know coming hard on the rule right right yeah, exactly. just yeah okay okay exactly i see um and another thing that i I, I don't really like is that when when there is a high ball coming into the box mm-hmm. and the goalkeeper goes for a challenge for aerial challenge or duel with with the striker yep and the goalkeeper is losing that duel even without any foul from striker yep it's a free, it's a free kick yeah. mm, I, i really don't like that rule i Oh, oh, I don't know. It's the rule, but I don't is, like that fact. Is it over protection? Over too much yeah. of protection for the goalkeeper? Exactly, yeah. exactly that. So Because strange. So so so, so 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 surprising. Yeah, Yuri coming <laughs> from a goalkeeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to change the status quo a little bit. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great to hear these yeah. views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, I think it's uh, it's refreshes our mind at the moment because yeah. honestly all the while when I watch football I mean yes we know about the six second rule but it never occurred to us actually that sometimes that these goalkeepers do take a little bit longer and the referee mm. doesn't really act on it yeah, I mean, exactly. it's, 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 well, it's well it opens up a lot of things okay <laughs> exactly like it, like in futsal it, mm-hmm. it's really that the referee is counting you know oh, the yes, last yes. seconds out loud And that that gives a different demand for the players and and decision making of a goalkeeper. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay is it because the futsal court is like maybe smaller, easier to manage, or is it because it's, mm. the bigger field is kind of uh, I don't know, it is a random part. Yeah, so absolutely. But but also I think it's at the same time it's uh, the fact that futsal is so much younger sport in in mm. in professional and high level. So there is more flexi- Maybe there is more flexibility, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. As we all know that uh, you're uh, the goalkeeping coach for the New York Red Bulls. I mean, Red Bulls' involvement in football does always split football fans' opinion, and we can't deny whether it's Leipzig, Salzburg, or even New York for that matter. These are amongst the most progressive football teams in the world. So, what is your feeling like to be working for such an esteemed organization? Um, really good. 
because I feel like I'm in a, I'm in environment that I don't need to worry about my development uh, based on the environment. I, I know that there is a lot of different impulses in New York Red Bull from my colleagues, from, from the global soccer uh, and from the, all these other teams that you just mentioned. There is a lot of really high, qualify, uh, high quality and qualified professionals around me. And, and I know that, that this kind of environment is challenging in terms of, of, of development and getting better and, and creating the environment better because the culture is so strong already. On, on developing something and not being afraid of uh, breaking the rules, uh, not being afraid of co- trying to go to a next level with 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 the methods that are are not traditional methods in in professional football. Um, so so this is something special, but also that makes me that gives me some harmony uh, for the future that that the, the goals that I have at the end can be fulfilled as a coach because the pathway feels feels something so right but mainly because of the learning opportunities um because it, it it's been i've been in the situation like i I've, I've been feeling that i can't stay here for too long uh even if things are good and the foot level of football is good but the feeling of not not getting anywhere uh, with the de- with the development, it's been frustrating feeling. Um, this is all, of course, this is a personality question, but but in in our organization, I haven't had a day like that. Um, it's a it's a driven organization in in all the aspects, basically. Is there anything one of the interesting moments which you will never forget in your coaching career that you would like to share with us? Maybe like I think you started off telling that you're. At your age, you were actually coaching a elder player, so anything more specific or something which is inspired you, or anything which is keep you interesting? Yeah, uh, I have few few to mention. Um, first of all, I will never forget the moment when I when I was in school um, and and made that decision that I will instead of uh, taking the the typical route, uh, playing it safe, and you know trying to play at the same time but having um, academic uh, education going to school and putting full effort on a school and same time let's see where the football career takes me um, when I made that decision that I will go fully on this and and if it doesn't take me anywhere I can still study later uh, and after that every decision has been different you know because I, I realized that this is the this is the route that I haven't seen anybody else taking, um, so I will never forget forget that. And that moment has been influencing my decision making ever since. And basically, I've been moving all the time because of football ever since I was seventeen. Um, but another one, really really strong feeling was when I was working in. Uh, I was 26 and I was working in Estonian uh, youth national teams. Uh, and when I got this opportunity to move to Qatar and the whole process of being very, very inexperienced coach in many ways uh, in relation to professional football in, in big countries. Um, when I got to this uh, job interview process for the first time, um, starting in a video interviews, um, sending my my material and and training footage over, getting some feedback, getting getting some questions from these people that were so much above me uh, in terms of experience and knowledge and and profile and everything. Um, and then the final stage of interview when they when they invited two candidates over and it was it was three days uh, <laughs> job interview. And, and without going to details now, it was really tough um, in, ma- in many ways, not, not only the tasks, but also the way, the way they uh, proceeded and the way they, cha- uh, they tested me and probably the same, same for the other candidate the next week, uh, the week after me. But I will never forget those emotions that, that I had when I, when I walked, to the, walked back to the hotel from 
um, from day one. Um, same time, being so excited about ha- having that opportunity, but same time being so afraid that I will not get this job because I was so poor, I was so bad, I was the worst coach in the world. Um, and and being so excited about the opportunity to work with those people that they might be able to really help me and really push me and give that harsh, brutally honest uh, feedback that can only take me somewhere. Uh, and same time, if I return back to, to Estonia and continue my work there, I'm still in a paper, I'm in a good position for a young guy. But but the difference in terms of learning opportunity in between those two were massive, like so huge. So this is the this is the the main the biggest biggest experience in my in my football career so far. That that I can always tell because it's it's because up and downs in in the same time. So and and also that moment changed changed everything basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're mentioning that you work in Qatar, which is the Aspire Academy. So, did you actually uh, work hand in hand with any of the Qatari national team goalkeeper that won the 2019 AFC Asian Cup? With uh, I'm not sure about the roster in that tournament, uh, but if I if I may take six six main goalkeepers from the first team, I've been working with four of them. Um, so probably yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not not the number one. Not the number one. He was older at that time already. Ah. Okay. I, I see. I see. Interesting times indeed. And uh, you know, Yiri, let's let's now just imagine. You know, you have got a very young kid standing in front of you now. You know, and you know, we give you about a couple of minutes to convince him why should he consider being a goalkeeper rather than an outfield player you know sell sell the goalkeeper position to him or maybe even his parents you know who are thinking you know you know why why should i make let my son become a goalkeeper yeah i i would definitely per, uh, start with asking questions about about his personality and and what he likes in general what kind of feelings he likes and everything and then from that perspective trying to find the the angle to to approach um, approach his mind and and you know marketing mm-hmm. the the role of the goalkeeper, but mm-hmm. definitely I would I would end up with the feeling of of being somebody that that can fix the mistakes mm-hmm. of the others and can be there supporting the others and and making the others brave. Um, whatever uh creative uh trying trying to con uh, trying to convince all the 11 or 7 or 5 in front of him to do their best and not to worry about anything i'm here for you i will fix it for you if something happens mm-hmm. and same time when when the young goalkeeper has that att- attitude and mindset the others will want to fight for him but there is always this little difference in between others fighting for me and me fighting for the others. But always the team, the players are together and the goalkeeper is an extra. And that it is what it is. It, it will never change completely as long as the goalkeeper has different color of clothes and, and role and the responsibility and, and different name, like, like you said, outfield players and the goalkeeper. Like mm-hmm. as as much as we want them to be all all football players, it is what it is. He has a different color of clothes. Mm-hmm. So I think this is the this is the feeling that that I would like to give him. And and maybe because everybody likes scoring goals, so maybe yeah. give a little give a little example that hey, this is exactly the same thing. You stop them having fun, you know, mm-hmm. against your team. Yeah. So. And yeah, of yeah. course, maybe maybe for young guys and young girls, I would definitely uh, make a little marketing strategy on the on the different clothes and gloves and, and <laughs> these kind of <laughs> things that are unique. Yeah, because you 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 can really stand out. Yeah, as, as, as a goalkeeper, you know you are the most unique person out there on the field. 
Exactly. Yeah, and and uh, and and the thing is, uh, Yiri, you know, the 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 thing with this goalkeeping uh, thing is sometimes I I just got this question, you know, I and and we always see <coughs> that when we watch games live on TV and all this, and we see the goalkeeper make a fantastic diving save, you know, flying like a Superman <laughs> save or something like that, right? And then at the, and on the other end of the spectrum, you know, you get goalkeepers who, who make those very mundane, boring saves, okay? The, the, the meaning to say that uh, I suppose his positioning is actually better than that Superman guy, right? But of course, for spectator, people love to see those kind of things. But in your position, in your opinion, right? What what makes like a good goalkeeper is I mean I I'm sure that sup, it, it, when you make that Superman kind of save it, does it mean that the goalkeeper was actually out of position and so that's why he had to just you know do something like that. Mm, yeah, it might mean that it might mean that and often there is something like that in behind. Um, mm-hmm. But also also like we we earlier we spoke about uh, differences in between the goalkeepers. Mm-hmm. So that that's another story. Also, like maybe the maybe the small one ha- really have to jump and have to take off and cannot really catch that difficult ball mm-hmm. when the bigger one is just you know so the, the movement movement is simple instead of ba- burying the ball. It's a catch. It mm-hmm. looks completely different, but it was the same. It was the same situation. Same. Same save and and same value with that save, which is most important. Physique, physique as well, yeah. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why we see uh, Ika Casillas doing a lot of Superman uh, saves during these <laughs> days. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and just wanted to ask Yuri. I mean, uh, as a coach, you know, of course, you're working with a few goalkeepers at the same time, and it's obvious that you know one is going to be the first choice, and then second choice, and third choice. So, how do you keep those like? I mean, I I believe the second choice will know that his chance is just around the corner. But what about those third and fourth choice keeper? How do you keep them motivated in, during trainings and all that? Main thing that I can do is is really start every day with the mindset that I'm gonna help you. So it's super important to know what that person wants. Mm. You know, maybe the num- number three. Uh, can be 17 year old super talented guy who goes to play with the second team in the weekend and he's super happy uh, so so it's easy to help him or it can be 39 year old goalkeeper who wants to become a goalkeeper coach in in couple of years or it might be really unhappy guy who doesn't understand why he's not number one and number two so most most important thing as a group of that uh, leader of that uh, that group within the team is to understand what every single guy wants um, and then trying to do everything in your capacity that that you help them and the second thing is honesty even if the situation is not nice even if if um, the view of the coaching staff and the view of the goalkeeper are not really meeting and it's hard to understand why why I'm in a position of a second guy. My, you know, there, there can be a lot of things behind, you know. So honesty, honesty, always be honest because then you can then you can really answer. And when you cannot answer, tell that. Like I don't know the reason to that. I try to find out. Or or you know, be human to to other human. Mm, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, guys. Any last questions from yourself? Uh, yeah, just um, just uh, one, just one more uh, from my side here, Yuri. I when it comes to goalkeeping, right, and especially like for youngsters in the academy and all that, do you consider the position less competitive compared to other positions? So, 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 meaning to say that you know, if somebody would really want to pursue this, um, the the chances are are pretty much higher for you to get in if you're good, of course. And uh, I mean, what's 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 your opinion on this? In terms of actually, that that's yeah. really interesting. That's really interesting. And of course, now I'm I'm trying to think in which level and mm-hmm. and in which country also. Like like we know in some in some countries in Asia, for example, you just have less less tall people, for example. So mm. the the tall the tall boy or girl who wants to go to goal and has a good yeah. uh, athletic skills 
he has really high chances to make it professional. Even yeah. that he's not that talented like all the other options in to play as a left back, for example. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that that I can see for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know how competitive it is in in Germany, for example, where where you might have in in the area of Berlin, you might have um, the talent the talent pool of whole Scandinavia in 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 one area mm -hmm. in one region mm -hmm. and lot of physically talented talented people but yeah i would say so especially especially looking at the expected uh physical size and all that because that's one one thing that we just can't change and we we still have limited amount of of those those uh, uh capacities yeah fantastic yeah bala you wanted to ask something yeah no, I just wanted to ask. Uh, I think the 2015 Champions League, whereby I think Barcelona opted to use, uh, I think Claudio Bravo in the uh, in the league, and uh, the German guy Stegen. Uh, just Stegen. Yeah. Just Stegen, and then the, I think it kept some harmony within the team. Is it a good choice, or is it one of the odd uh, strategy by Luis Enrique to utilize this energy? Yeah, I think I think it's a really odd situation, and. And as much as comes to my mind, or as much as I know, it's not maybe proven to be the best uh, strategy for a long term. So for me, that kind of situation, most of the time, it um, looks like some kind of compromise. Um, but of course, it's a team. It's a team sport, so I would like to see that kind of uh, strategy working for a long term and people being happy with that. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, uh, so any last word from yourself, Jiri? Sorry? Any last word from yourself? Uh, not really, not really. Um, I'm hoping that, that the listeners get some... Uh, some extra insight on on goalkeeping and especially uh, coaching of goalkeepers, but same time in in co uh, coaching in general, because um, I would like to consider myself as a as a football coach who is uh, specialized in goalkeepers, and and that that football people don't always think that it's two different things in in coaching goalkeepers and coaching uh, coaching the team or coaching the outfield. Or coaching the individual, like like it's more and more common all over the world that that we have uh, individual coaches uh, for different positions, and I think I think that's amazing because this is how we can. It doesn't need to be a two hours individual session uh, twice a week. It can be also ten minutes of individual work and individual uh, feedback and specific um, tasks and guidelines. Yeah within the collective exercises so uh yeah my main message is that main, main message is that um see see all that uh, from perspective of coaching of uh coaching football not only uh coaching goalkeepers mm, okay we'll try okay guys any last word from yourself guys i uh, know yeah just uh, thank you yiri for joining us on the show and really giving us a lot of insight on this position and i'm sure you know many people out there will really take a lot of interest now in the goalkeeping position yeah thanks to you man yeah. thank you so much it's yeah. absolutely absolutely a pleasure yeah. yeah thank you so much yiri i think uh, it's, been, it's been a while we're trying to connect to you and very we're very helpful and very really encouraged to us thanks for supporting us and uh, have a have a good day and we hope you're successful in your Thank you so much and, and have a good Christmas time. Every everybody all over the world. Absolutely. And, th and thank you for myself as well. Okay. All right now, folks. Uh with that said, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola show. Hopefully, you are entertained and gain a few knowledge about the roles of a goalkeeping coach and goalkeepers as well. And till next time, goodbye.